We're going to look at multiplying and dividing functions now, and we've looked at adding and subtracting functions, and multiplying and dividing is no different, except obviously we'll be multiplying and dividing instead of adding and subtracting. So let's say we're going to find h of x, and h of x this time is going to be, oh, let's start with f, it'll be f of x times g of x. Or another way we could write this is f times g, a little dot for times, f times g of x. So f of x times g of x. So I've got f of x here. It's a line. It goes, has a domain of all real numbers. g of x has a domain, though, that starts here and ends here. So just like before, um, if we're going to find h of x, we must make sure that we have domain for both of those those functions. So I'm going to start right here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so h of negative 5 is going to be the same thing as f of minus 5 times g of minus 5. So the f function at minus 5 is negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 2 times, and g of negative 5 is positive 1. So I have negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. So we're going to start right there. And now I'm going to pick this point next at minus 3. h of minus 3 will be f of minus 3. So the f function is at minus 1 times the g function, which is at 3. And negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So that'll be right here. So my graph has done this so far. Now let's uh, let's do uh, negative two. Just working our way from left to right here. So f would be this would be negative a half or negative zero point five times two and negative a half times two is negative one. And here we have zero times two which is zero. And here we have 1 times 2, which is 2. So connecting my lines, dots will look like this. And here we have a y value of, let's do this one first, 1 and a half. 1 and a half times Let's write that one out, because that's a little bit tricky. So we're at 2 here now. So h of 2 is going to be 1 and a half times 3. And 1 and a half times 3 is 4 and a half. So when x is 2, my y value is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. And finally, I can go no farther than 3 here, because at this point I'm now going to be past the domain. If I go past there, I'm going to be past the domain of g. So h of 3 is going to be f, which is 2, times g, which is 3. And now we have 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6. So our graph's going to have kind of a curve through like this. And this would be this would be our graph h of x. And it would have a domain that would go from negative 5 to positive 3. And it would have a range that would go from negative 3 all the way up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So really nothing different here than adding and subtracting, except we're taking the f value and we're multiplying it by the g value to get our new value for, for h of x. Okay, let's uh, look at a dividing example. So I've got h of x equals f of x divided by g of x. So I'm going to take the f function and divide by the g function, or another way of writing that is f divided by g 
of x. So let's start here out on the left. So I'm going to take my f function here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're starting here at negative 5. Both graphs start here, so that's great. We can start working on this. So f is the red one. So 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, divided by the g function, which is 3. So h of negative 5 is going to be 7 divided by 3, which is 2 and a third. So about 2.33. So dividing is going to be a little bit going to work out perfect. 7 divided by 3 doesn't come out to a nice integer. So, but, a, but we're just sketching a graph, so about 2.3 um, might be about here. So we're going to start, we're going to start there. Now, here, when h is my, h is my, but when x is minus 4, we now have 2 divided by 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is going to work out quite nice. That's just 1. And now here we have 1, whoops, see we've got to be careful, we're doing f, let's, let's just do this here, h of minus 3, so the f function, that's the red one, so now it's minus 1 divided by the blue function, which is positive 1, so we're going to be at negative 1 here. And now we've got at negative 2, we're going to have the f function, which is negative 2, divided by the blue function, g of x, which is 0. Negative 2 divided by 0, this is a problem. We can't divide by 0. So when we have a new function h of x, and it depends upon f of x divided by g of x, when we're dividing we're dividing functions, we have a restriction here, and that of course is that g of x cannot be 0, because we can't divide by 0. So here's our blue graph. There is a place in the blue graph where it equals 0. We can't do that. So that's going to produce an asymptote there. And this graph, our h of x graph, is going to go down, 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 down. You could imagine if we tried a point here, we can't use minus 2, but we could use, say, minus 2.1. We could go to minus 2.1, which is right here. The y value on the f function would be about, about minus 2, be approximately minus 2. And the x value, or sorry, the y value here at negative 2.1 is going to be a very, very, very small positive number. Well, if you take a number like negative 2, So you take negative 2 here and you divide it by a small number, like point up that's positive. So there's a very small positive number. We're going down to negative infinity. That's a massive number that's negative. So this is basically going to be negative infinity. So that's why this graph is going down, 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 down here. Now, just to the right of this asymptote, we've got a negative here, like a negative 2, divided by a small negative number, and a negative divided by a negative is going to be a small positive number, or very large positive number. So this, this graph is going to be going, going up here. And then we can move along here to negative 1, and h of negative 1 would be f of x divided by g of x, and negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. So our graph will come along the asymptote here. and uh, be positive 1 here at 0 f of x is 2 and g of x is minus 2 and 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 and so they're going to cross Cross the x-axis right here. At this point right here is where f of x is 0. So 0 divided by whatever y is in g of x will be 0. 
And looks like we can go as far as one more point here because these graphs both have a domain here. After this, we won't be able to go any farther. So h of 1 is f of x, which should be 7 again. Yep. Divided by g of x, which is minus 3. And here we have negative 2.3. Which might be something like that. So we're going to get a, a smooth curve like this and a smooth curve like this and it's going to end end right there. So really it's the same. If we're going to find h of x, uh, finding the quotient of two functions, we take the f value, the y value here at f, the y value here at g and, and divide them. And the only thing that you got to be a little bit careful to remember is that g of x cannot be zero. So wherever your g function crosses the x-intercept, crosses the x-axis, we will have we will have asymptotes there because we can't divide by zero. So that's multiplying and dividing functions.